Hello, and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Welcome to the California Southern University Learning Center orientation. This orientation will take approximately 45 minutes. The video player you're using to watch this orientation has the ability to pause, stop, fast forward, and rewind in the event you want to revisit an explanation of anything you see today. The purpose of the orientation is to give you the information that you need to be successful in this learning center and also to thrive in your chosen school. Thanks for joining us today. Let's begin by taking a look at the different tabs of the Learning Center and then we'll start with the home page. When you land on the home page of the Cal Southern Learning Center, you have access to the following tabs. Home, Academics, Library Services, Books, Resources, Your Account, and Support Service, and we'll review the different parts of these tabs today. We're going to begin by looking at the home page. This is your home page. If you ever get lost, you can remember to click the home page to find your way again. At the far left hand side of the home page is our learner spotlight. This is a voluntary area for all of the learners here at the university to upload a picture and a brief biography. You're welcome to participate in this learner spotlight area. Our tip of the week gives you some helpful hints on how to be successful in your academic program. At the far right hand side is the contact us area. This team of people is here to help you answer any question that you might have while you're attending the university and in your individual programs. The first member of your support team is the dean of the school you're enrolled in. Our dean of the School of Behavioral Sciences is Dr. Barbara Grimes. Our dean of the School of Business is Dr. Gregory Herbert. Our dean of the School of Law is Ellen Sampong, JD. And our dean of our School of Nursing is Dr. Judith McLeod. In addition to your respective deans, you will also have an academic advisor. The academic advisor is the person that you will be corresponding with on a regular and consistent basis. They will check in with you periodically throughout your actual course and during the next eight weeks to make sure that you're on track and to finish your courses on time. Our learner success advisor, Francis Simmons, is here to help you be successful with APA style, the Learning Center, and any other technology or academic issue that you may have. You will also be assigned with each course a faculty mentor. Our faculty mentors are your professor. They are the one who will guide you from the start to the end of each individual course. Our faculty mentors have the appropriate credentials to be teaching the courses that they are, and they also have years of practical experience in their field so they can speak to your chosen career path. In the middle of your home page, you'll find your currently enrolled courses. You will see the start date and the end date of each course. In the beginning, you'll also see a sample course called the SAM 100 course, and we'll be taking a look at this today. Please don't be alarmed if you see this course on your home page. This is not a course that you have to pay for, and it's not a course that you have to order any books for. The SAM 100 course is a sample course and it's used for demonstration purposes, and it will drop off your homepage in approximately eight weeks. In the bottom right-hand corner is the Cal Southern Web Portal Group Orientation Area. We offer live orientations with other learners three times a week, Tuesdays at 8 a.m., Wednesdays at noon, and Thursdays at 6 p.m. all Pacific time. When the orientation is available, this icon here will become green. All you'll have to do is click on the link, sign in, and attend. If you ever have any trouble attending the orientation, please click this link here. And at the bottom of our home page are our community boards. These are general chat areas for all of the learners here at the university. Important news and announcements we want to call your attention to and any other important notices that we need you to be aware of. Those are all of the parts of your home page. Next, I'd like to click on the link labeled calsouthern.edu email. California Southern University will be providing you with an email that is your first name, a dot, your last name at my.calsouthern.edu. It works through our Office 365 Outlook portal. The first time that you log into the California Southern Learning Center, 
you will see a gray box here that asks you to launch the program. It will ask you for your time zone. Please be sure to set up your account as this will be the primary method of communication for the university. Once you click this link to launch Office 365, you will also have access to the Microsoft Office suite of applications that include Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and some communication tools called Yammer and our email program. You also have the option to forward your personal email to this Cal Southern email or forward your Cal Southern email to your personal email, whichever you prefer. We're going to click back on the Welcome tab and remember that underneath Home, you have Welcome, where your courses are located, and your Cal Southern email. To the right of the Home tab is the Academics tab. The purpose of the Academics tab is to show you your degree plan. All of the required courses are listed here, your elective courses here, and any additional courses that you need to take to complete your degree or certificate or program will be listed here. Your academic advisor will have an appointment with you at the beginning of your program to discuss your degree plan and all the requirements of the courses. In addition to the degree plan tab being a listing of all the courses that you need to take, it's also the registration area of those courses. At the far left hand side, we have a blue button that says next semester start. This is where you begin to register for a course. All of our courses start on the first of any month that you pick. So the first thing is to click the date you want to begin your course. Over at the right side, you'll see a green request course button. This is how you request or register for the course. Once you request a course, you will receive notification that the request has been sent to your academic advisor and is awaiting approval. Once the course has been approved, you will see that the course is considered in progress. You will no longer see the Request Course button, but you'll see three other buttons, Request Extension, Drop, and Change the Start Date. You have the ability to change the start date of a course within the first 14 days with no financial penalty. So for example, if your course begins July 1st, you have until July 14th to make a change, again with no financial penalty. This will change your start date to the date that you request in the change start date area. It will also ask you for a brief description and then you click the submit course request button. You also have the ability to drop a course through the drop button. And then finally, if you need more time to complete your course, we have a feature called an extension. All of our courses are eight weeks in length. If you're getting close to the end of the eighth week and you find that you need more time, you can request an extension. An extension has an administrative fee and it gives you 30 more days to complete the course. You can request up to two extensions for every course. Just a reminder, we do have a continuous enrollment policy. You are to be continuously enrolled in a course. So for example, if I have a course that starts on July 1st, it will end at the end of August, and my next course should begin September 1st. If for any reason you need time off between classes, please contact your academic advisor immediately. So under the Academics tab, the first sub-tab is called Degree Plan. The second tab is called Course History. This is a listing of the courses that you've already completed. It will list the course, your mentor, the start date of the course, the end date of the course, if you took any extensions, the date you completed the course, and the grade that you received for the course. This area can also act as an unofficial transcript and you are able to print a grade report. This area will show you how many units that you need to complete your program and it will also tabulate your GPA. To the right of the Course History tab is your Catalog Course Listing. This is a listing of all of your required core courses and your electives and the blue links take you to a brief description of what will be covered in the course. If you're considering taking Cultural Diversity, for example, you can click on the link 
and the secondary screen will give you a brief description of all of the topics that will be covered in that course. So in your Academics tab, you have your Degree Plan sub-tab, shows you all of the courses that you need to complete for your degree. You have your Course History tab that shows you courses you've already completed, and your Catalog course listing to give you a brief description of courses you're considering to take next. To the right of our Academics tab is our Library Services tab. We have an absolutely fantastic online library that's divided into four categories. They are databases, citation, services, and websites. If you need to find a journal article or an ebook or a video or a newspaper to complete research for your assignments, they can all be accessed through our online databases, through our online library. The citation column has lots of features to help you with grammar and the APA citation rules. And then in our services tab, you're able to communicate with our online librarians. We have two great librarians. We have our Director of Library Services, Jennifer Hill, who has her master's degree in library science, and Diane Wren, our Associate Director of Library Services. Either one of them can help you navigate the databases or find the articles that you need to complete for your assignment. And lastly, the website column has several resources to assist you with your research, as well as an additional resource to help you find textbooks. For those of you who are registered in the School of Law, we also have our Law Library. It has links to Westlaw, LexisNexis, Cali, and the ProQuest Criminal Justice Database to help you find articles on criminal justice, as well as Cali lessons, legal writings, and law exams. This is available to all of our learners enrolled in the School of Law. Our textbook resources link in the website area of our library shows you additional resources to secure your textbooks from. Both new and used physical and digital textbooks, they give you the opportunity to buy or rent textbooks, as well as borrow textbooks. You can create an interlibrary loan service with your local public library and check books out from worldcat.org and return them when you're done. To the right of our Library Services tab is our Books tab. Our California Southern University Virtual Bookstore is run for us by eCampus.com. They're available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time and they're closed Saturday and Sunday. They can be reached at area code 877-284-6744 and you can order textbooks, sell textbooks, and search for textbooks for your courses. To the right of the Books tab is the Resources tab. The Resources tab has sub-tabs labeled Department Documents, University Documents, University News, Proctored Exams, and Video Player. The Department Documents area has links for each school and necessary documents that you'll need in each school. Our University Document sub-tab has access to our Cal Southern University catalog, our Library Handbook, our Learner Handbook, and our Cal Southern Academic Integrity Policy. At your earliest convenience, please watch the PowerPoint and take the associated questionnaire. To the right of the Resources tab is the Your Account tab. The Your Account tab has subtabs titled Profile, Financial Information, Surveys, and Questionnaires. Under the Questionnaire tab is the Academic Integrity Questionnaire. After you watch the PowerPoint in the Resources area, please visit the Questionnaire tab and take the Academic Integrity Questionnaire. The personal profile area has your name, your address, your telephone number, and your Cal Southern email address. Please feel free to add any additional email addresses to communicate with you in the account area of the personal profile. If you'd like to participate in the Learner Spotlight area on the home page, the bio area is where you would upload a brief biography.
There are three reasons why you might want to upload a photo to our photo profile area in the Your Account tab. If you'd like us to mail you a student ID card, please upload a digital photo to the Learner ID card photo area. If you'd like to participate in the Learner Spotlight on the home page, the Spotlight photo is where you would upload a digital photo. Please give us permission to use the photo. And then lastly, up at the top, Profile Thumbnail. If you'd like a small photo of yourself to show up whenever you're participating in the discussion forum area, please upload a digital photo to the Profile Thumbnail area. Under Profile Settings, this is where you give us permission to utilize the photos that you upload and also to have a flag that represents your country show up in the discussion forum, a small icon that represents your degree program and your photo. Any other information that you want to be accessible within the core series and learner listing, permissions would be granted here and also if you'd like to receive our university newsletter. Please complete the information in the technical profile area. This will enable our IT department to assist you should you have any issues. And then finally, if you'd like to change your password for the Cal Southern Learning Center, this is located under Change Password in the Profile Your Account area. Please remember that all passwords should be at least eight characters utilizing letters, numbers, and upper and lower case letters. The Financial Information tab gives you information about monthly payments, your account history, and any fee payments. The information that you add here can only be seen by you and our accounting department employees. If you ever need to contact them, simply click on Contact Us, and they can be reached at area code 800-477-2254, extension 4202, or accounting at calsouthern.edu. The university is always concerned with your thoughts and feelings, and at the end of every class, we take a post-course survey. If you've completed a class and not completed the post-course survey, you'll find any incomplete surveys listed here. Please take them and let us know how you thought and felt. And then finally, the questionnaire that we want you to take is the Academic Integrity Questionnaire. Please watch the PowerPoint presentation located underneath the Resources area and answer the Academic Integrity Questionnaire. To the right of the Your Account tab is the Support Services tab. The Support Services tab has subtabs labeled FAQ, Technical Support, Contact Us, Faculty Mentor Listing, and Administrative Staff Listing. First, we have Frequently Asked Questions. The FAQs are our frequently asked questions. These are the top 21 questions we get from learners most often. So we've posted the answers here for you. If you want to remember how to get an ID card from the university, simply click on the question and the answer will appear. One click turns the answer on and one click turns the answer off. You have access to technical support here at California Southern University. We have a fantastic IT technical support team and they can be reached at area code 800-477-2254 extension 4256 and they're available Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Please don't get discouraged if you get their voicemail. Please leave a message and they'll return your call as soon as possible. You can also email them at itsupport at calsouthern.edu. For after hours and weekend support, you can dial that same number and leave them a message. And if it's an urgent nature, they'll get back to you right away. Otherwise, they'll get back to you the following Monday morning. There are times when our IT department may need to log into your computer to help you troubleshoot, and for that purpose, we use Log Me In. You can actually initiate a support request through Log Me In by clicking here. To the right of technical support is Contact Us, Faculty Mentor Listing, and our Administrative Staff Listing. We have a listing of everyone here at the university and please reach out to us we're happy to help you those are the features of our support services tab i'm going to click back on the home tab now and we're going to take a look at a sample course and how to complete your assignments required for your courses 
So that you can be successful in completing all the requirements for your courses, we'd like to review a sample course called SAM 100. From the home page, underneath Currently Enrolled Courses, we're going to click the blue link for SAM 100. Any course that you're currently enrolled in will show up in the Currently Enrolled Courses area, and you can click on the blue link to access that course. Today, we're going to access the SAM 100 course. When you click on the link to access a course, you land on our navigation bar. It has links titled Overview, Essentials, Mentor, Activities, Forum, Exam, Resources, Surveys, Learners, and Comments. The Overview section shows you the start date and the end date of the course. It tells you how many assignments you have, and you're able to view and print the syllabus from the Overview area. There will also be a mentor note. This is a note from your professor explaining anything it is that they want you to know while you're taking the course. The Essentials section gives you information about the learning assessments, how to succeed, our primary textbook, how to participate in the forum, our course participation, our bulk uploading policy, our academic integrity policy, um, and our grading scale is here as well as our rubrics. Our rubrics is a table that lists the differences between what would be in an A, B, C, and a D paper. This is what your mentors use when they're coming up with the grade for your course. And this is all located in the Essentials section. The next link is the Mentor link. This will show you a picture of your mentor, a brief biography, their complete educational background, their email address, their office hours, and how to communicate with them directly. Should you have any questions about course content or understanding of the material. The activities schedule is a complete listing of all of the assignments that need to be completed to finish the course. All of our courses are eight weeks in length and each week of the eight weeks shows you all assignments that are due that week. The activity schedule is divided into columns, the weeks themselves, the due dates, the activity types, files, points, whether the assignment is completed or not, and what percentage that assignment is of your overall grade. You will usually have three assignments each week. Each assignment within a given week has a link that takes you to a description of the assignment. So if we click on assignment number one here, we go to a secondary screen that shows us what needs to be done to complete that assignment. It will let you know what chapters to read from the book, and it will give you directions about what's required in the document. Once you've created the introductory paper, you'll save it to your computer, you'll go down to the coursework area, click the plus sign, and upload the assignment. When you have completed your assignment, you're ready to upload it to the coursework area. Click the plus sign underneath the word coursework to open up the portal. The assignment number will pre-populate from the Cal Southern Learning System. You'll click in the assignment name box and type in the name of your assignment. In this particular instance, it's called introductory paper. To locate the paper on your computer and link it to this coursework area, click the Browse button to the right of Coursework File. Locate the assignment on your computer, click on it, and click Open. This will create a path from your computer to our learning system so that when you click the Send button, a copy will come across. You will be required to read and agree with our academic integrity statement by checking here. The send button will become active and you'll click the send button. Once you click the send button, the paper will upload to this area down here. If for any reason you need to delete the paper, you can simply click the gray box with the red X and this will delete the assignment. And then you can go through the process of uploading the paper again. Please be sure to upload all assignments labeled coursework to the coursework area for each assignment. Do not email the paper to your mentor. In addition to coursework assignments, there are also activities labeled discussion forum. The discussion forum assignment takes the place of the course meeting. 
You'll locate the activity type labeled Discussion Forum and click on Class Participation to find the directions for what you need to contribute for that week. Once you've located the directions, you simply click on Forum and click on the appropriate week. We'll click on Week 1 and we'll click on Week 1 again. And when we're ready to contribute to the discussion, we simply click the button here labeled Reply to Thread. You type in your response to the question of the week, and when you're done typing, you can click Submit. If you'd like to type in Word in advance to check for grammar and spelling, you can do that and simply select all of the text from Word, paste it into this text box, and click Submit, and your discussion forum contribution will be completed. There may be opportunities for you to reply to other learners within your discussion forum. To reply to another learner, simply locate that learner's dialog box and click Reply with Quote. A discussion box will open, their posting will appear, and you click underneath it, and then you can type in your response to their posting. When you are finished, click the Submit button and your response to that learner will be posted. Any other activities within your schedule can be found by simply clicking on that assignment and following the directions. In addition to coursework assignments and discussion forum assignments, your course may have a final exam. All of our exams here at California Southern University are proctored, which means someone watches you take the exam. When you click on the exam tab, you'll see that we use ProctorU to proctor your exam. They can remotely watch you take the exam for your convenience so that you don't need to drive anywhere. At about the fourth week of your eight-week course, we recommend that you click on ProctorU.com and schedule your final exam. It's not an automatic activity. Let's say your class starts on September 1st and it ends on October 27th. You'll need to complete your final exam on or before October 27th. So again, in about the fourth week of the class, click on ProctorU.com and schedule the date and the time that you want to complete the final exam. When that day rolls around, you'll log on to your Learning Center, you'll click on ProctorU.com and log in. They'll guide you back to this area where you click on Final Exam. They will type in the exam code and then you'll be able to click the button that says Begin Exam. Most of our exams here at California Southern University are two hours in length, they are multiple choice, and they are open book. You will not be able to use any additional materials nor the internet while taking our online proctored exam. When the exam is completed, You'll simply click the Submit button and you'll be able to immediately review all of the questions that you got right and wrong. The grade for your final exam will not immediately appear. Your mentor has the ability to review your exam and upload your final exam score. As soon as your mentor has completed their review of your final exam, they will add your points to the activity schedule. Once your course is complete, you will see your total points and your grade will appear in the bottom of the activity schedule area. The resources area will show you the primary textbook that you'll need for the course, the title of the book, the author, the ISBN number, that's the international standard book number, and the edition of the book that you'll need to purchase. All that information will be in the primary resources area of the resources section of the course. Any additional resources that you might need to be successful in your course will be listed here. And any supplemental references and readings recommended by your mentor will be listed here as well. At the end of your course, we ask you to take the post-course survey. The post-course survey asks your thoughts and feelings, and the university is very interested in your opinion of how the course progressed. Please take the post-course survey when you're done. The learner area will give you a listing of anyone who's currently in the class at the same time you are and anyone who's taken the class if they've given permission for their name to show. The comments section is an area where you can type in a brief review of the class and this is for other learners who are about to take the class to see. 
and that is a complete review of the navigation bar of your course. We'll click back on the home button. Should you have any questions or concerns during your course, please contact your academic advisor. Their name and phone number is at the right side in the Contact Us area. And you can also contact your Learner Success Advisor. Her number is here as well. Thank you so very much for taking the time to complete the Cal Southern Learning Center orientation, and we wish you all the best.